187 at 5810 Murata Avenue. Homicide wants you over there. The coroner thinks the broad was whacked using the army morphine. Don't say anything, Roy. Just get over there. Hi everyone, welcome to LA Noir, my Patreon support uh, series. Something weird happened with the graphics there, I don't, don't know if you noticed it, but um, come on, Roy Earl. I say we remember his name. I get up of yours anyway. I should start introducing us as Detective Earl, and this is my science teacher, Mr. Phelps. Your interest right. in my appearance is starting to get me worrying. Yeah, like absolutely. Not, Calm down, Roy. Roy, whatever his name People is. People judge me with you on my arm the same way they would a fat broad with a five o'clock shadow. I really hope you're joking, Roy. No, he's not. <laughs> Who are you? Go away! You're not part of this story. <laughs> oh, we're apparently not staff. We can't go out through the uh, the door. Where are we going? Any messages? No. Okay. Go on, Royal. Poor little twist. She was thirteen if she was a day. Let's get out of here. Oh, there's. There's the outside world. Right, come on. Let's hop to it. There we go. Right, where are we going, Roy? Hop in. Well, I'm driving, so... um. Right, where are we going? The murder scene. That seems like a great place to start. Right, let's get to it. Apartment address of the victim. Cool. Oh, I forgot how appalling the steering is in this car. Distracted. We recovered the morphine. Here we are. The murder scene, 2.26 p.m. Second floor, apartment six, in the back. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Redcoat, whoever you are. Right, so we've got a murder scene. Obviously, the coroner's here, I can see from the truck outside. Well, this is technically the first floor, so let's go up. I've got a funny feeling they meant the first floor. They did. Why do they always say that? Or maybe that's the difference between a bit of American and a bit of uh, British English. Yeah. Bukowski, you made homicide. That I did. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want Bukowski, hug? Rusty. It's like a party. Relax, Rusty. Twenty-six years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. We heard Carruthers thinks. Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills. Falls asleep in the tub. Rest in peace. Case closed. Here, here. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. Thanks, boys. Rusty's got a bit grumpy in his old age, isn't he? Uh, okay. Who wants me to go this way? Hello. Mal, we've had a look around. Rusty What's Ray doing? doing? Time. What's I say Ray, it's Roy, isn't Come it? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. If the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. So she doesn't have any. Notice anything about our Vic? May I took a look? Be my guest. The answer is she didn't drown. <laughs> Take a closer look at her head and neck. I will do. Hang on. As soon as I sort my hand out, ooh. His hand goes into a cupping motion as he goes over the towel. She's got a ring. Very unusual ring. I could be wrong, but it looks like a black sapphire. A black sapphire. Oh, look at her nails. So she was definitely scratching or trying to get out or something. She got some very nasty bruises on her arm. Oh no. Put it down. Put her hand down. Oh, can we look at the bruises? No. The 
neck is bruised pretty badly. It is indeed. Oh, and it's clicking. Oh. 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 She needed the chiropractor for sure. Let's have a look at the sound. Can't. Bruising on the forearms and these look like bite marks. They do look like bite marks, don't they? The eyes are a classic sign of morphine, and the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning. Yeah. And spread a trail of barbiturates. Take a look around outside on your way out to see if you can find the Sorettes. It would make my theory. The morphine would have been very quick, and there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay, so find two guys who recently bought Sorettes and weren't junkies, and you might be onto something. Right, okay. But first, let's have a little poke around all her personal stuff. Oh, what is this? Or... Oh, it's a hairbrush. Okay. Um... With some boys, huh? She got her heart broken. She couldn't take it anymore. So she ran herself a bath and down some hills and then she just. Hello. Off. I don't know. Look Creepy looking dude. He looks quite sinister. Had so much fire. So much oh, okay. She got a jacket. All the English smoking jacket. Haskell and Shaw, Anyone Savile Row, London. Would wear one. Wow. Probably quite expensive. Nothing here. Nothing there. What have we got on the bedside table? Barbiturates. What else is rattling around in this thing? I don't know. How, how do I... Okay, we'll look for... Oh! Hello. We should speak to a doctor. Prescribing mm. both drugs would make her life a roller coaster. Right. Um, is the coroner classes a doctor? Probably. Roy, get out of the way! It's my investigation. Damn it. Oh no, sorry. I want to talk to Mal. Mal! 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 He can't hear me. <laughs> right. Mm, she was doing some ironing. Where the fans going? I'm not sure why we're looking at the rolling pin. Doesn't tell it's me got, anything. Okay. Oh, it's got it's got flour on it. Is it flour though, or is it crushed up? Barbiturates. Who knows? A ladle. Hmm. Is it a ladle or is it this a ladle? Oh, put the ladle down, Cole. Leave the ladle. Step away from the ladle. Well, there's. She's obviously the uh, the lady you found her. I'll talk to you in a sec. We're still having a look around. Oh, okay. We've got a bit of a photo album to go through. Here we go. Beautiful girl. Those certainly aren't from the Sears catalog. Okay, we gotta find the one which she's got writing on the back then, do we? Let's go for lucky number middle. I know it's not a lucky number, but it's been a modeling assignment. Aha! 6582 Hollywood Boulevard. And anything on this one? Probably not. But for completion, let's get it checked out. End of town stuff. Gives us somewhere to look. Oops. And there was nothing there. Okay. Well, it was worth it. It was worth a double check. It's worth a double check. Um, what music she listened to? Don't know. Right, I suppose it's an uh, interview with the uh, the landlady then. I'm Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. 
Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson, I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I, who else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. Right. The victim's state of mind. Was Miss Randall depressed about something? Upset? No more than normal. Well... Well, she's not... So she's, she's holding something back. Can we prove that? Uh... Oh, it could be the... Uh, the drugs, of course. Okay, let's say... What are you hiding here, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julie was obviously disturbed about something. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, we, oh, do, we, do we do we go for the benzedrine? Is that um or sleeping pills? Troubled sleep, okay, and depression. She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox, the things she hid in there. I don't know how she supported herself. Always new clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star. A princess. Does modeling really pay that well? Um, I suppose at the top echelons it probably does. Did Miss Randall have many friends? Is it? I'm not sure. I only gentlemen callers. Oh, well, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. Why are you lying to me, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia had men stay here. Yes. I will not speak ill of the dead. <sighs> You can't prove that. Um. Oh, the men's smoking jacket. What about that? Oh. Who owns the smoking jacket? I wouldn't like to tell tales, you understand. That's Mr. Henderson's. An older man, very distinguished looking. He seemed very much in love with her. Where would we find him? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. He said he lives in San Francisco. All right. Relationship with the victim. What was it like working for Miss Randall? Perfectly fine, officer. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm sold. Well, that's obviously not... Um... Uh, we have no actual evidence of what their relationship is, so we'll have to go for a, a doubt. Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, though, is it? Uh, no. Thanks, Thank Mr. you, Johnson. Mrs. Reynoldson. You're very helpful. One of oh, the do you mean she's been very helpful? She lied to us all the way through that interview. Right. It's a little bit sycophantic having pictures of just yourself and your modelling career on the wall, isn't it? Or does everyone else have pictures of themselves? I know you have some pictures Devon, of your family and stuff. We'll take a look around outside and follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? Oh, I'm sure they took well to that, Cole. You think Carruthers has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm a Galloway. I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. Which door? Mm. Okay, we'll, we'll chance this one. So we're looking for any surrettes, are we? Uh, let's have a look down this uh, little corner. Here we go. Anything down here?
Nee. Oh! Oh, okay, I thought I was being attacked. No, we're okay. Um. <laughs> this cr coal's just crashing through the garbage, you know, it's absolutely fine. Any in there? No. Hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, have I not put my glasses on? <laughs> uh. Julia Randolph's apartment. Dr. Stoneman's apart practice. And. Dear Saint. <laughs> Dress store. Right, hang on. Should we try and read that this time? No, we're all in blurred vision. Why are we in blurred vision? I'm not sure. We gotta look. Where are we looking? Is it actually. Do we need to look outside the room rather than. Oh, the music's back on in here. Ah, right, it's in here. Because if I go outside, it goes all blurry. So it's definitely in here. Ah, hang on, there's a bin here. There we go. Mal will be pleased. Well, that's hardly conclusive. Given the number of those things we've come across recently, well, the autopsy will confirm it one way or another. Right. So, what do we want to do first, Roy? Do you want to do the um, doctors or the dress store? I suppose if we want to find out um, her how she could afford her lifestyle, we'll go to the dress store, shall we? Let's go. Come on, chase me, chase me. Where's the car? We'll take the panda. Go. It's got a little bit more kick, miss. Wait, the little reunion in there almost brought a tear to my eye. They're good police. How would you know? You got promoted so fast you barely had time to learn your names. Okay, here we are at the dress store. 2.53 p.m. <laughs> the car's looking great. Headlight hanging out. It's fine. It's fine. That's so, how so we picked it up. Honestly. Alright, let's do this. Well, hello. Well, hello there. You with today? Uh, I'm looking for something for oh, my friend. Me, I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. That, that stopped the conversation. Right, victim's employment history. How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Well, okay, I think she believes that. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. Oh. Her wives weren't happy and neither was I. Right. Does she have any <laughs> friends here? Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? Yes, please. I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. Hi, Heather. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? Lives a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life, full of wonderful company. That's a lovely right. engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? Mm, okay, it's a bit sinister. 
<laughs> okay. That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. What it is. Henry a fortune. He must really love you. Right, okay, that was random. That's obviously a, a, attaining something. Relationship with a victim. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiancé, Henry Arnett. Ah. Okay, that seems to be fine. Henry is your beau. Tell us about him. Yes, he is. Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. Okay, um, informed of Mr. Henderson. Are Ms. Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? Oh. No, nothing. She doesn't know him. That's true. She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson to me. Oh. That's all for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiancé to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Now, wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. Not no more. Just drugs. Right. Oh, somebody's repaired the headlight. Bless them. <laughs> right. Um... Uh, go down. There you go. <laughs> Let's go to the docks then. I'll find out what we can find about her medical history. Nice Watch out! Not telling old sweet lips in there about her friend taking a big jump till we were half out the door. Very slick. I figured we'd get more out of her that way. You're learning, yeah. folks. We'll make a vice cop out of you yet. Oh! I just about made that turn. Right. Oh, we go in the back way. There we go. But we pull up on the main street at Dr. Stoneman's practice at 3 p.m. Richer, cleaner, and bolder. <laughs> on the side of a on the side of a doctor's practice. Oh no, it's a deli. Station is. Where the hell is it then? Hang on. That's a deli. That's a stationery. Oh, this must be the doctor's practice. Then. Oh, a nice shiny floor. Nice shiny parquet floor, indeed. Oh, hang on, this is. Is this right? There's a gold doorknob. We'll go with it. Brilliant. Roy, where have you taken us? Where's this bloody doctor? Is this the doctor's on this side? The one the car's parked outside. No. How, how, how have we got so lost? We've just got out of the car. Where the hell's the doctor's? He's not practicing in the deli, is he? No. Oh, he's ridiculous. Stationery store. Kendall's Electronics. Jones ba pa uh, Pantry. Office Supplies. Where are we, Roy? It's got to be in this building. It has to be. It's the only one with the doors you can go in. Ah, hang on. Information board. Here we go. Um, Dr. Stowen, fifth floor, 505. Office 505. We got there eventually. Push the button, Colt. I swear, if we locked up every doctor in this town, twice we'd be able to work half days. Oh, there is music. Sorry. 
I didn't know there was music, so I thought I'd add it in to give you the full lift experience. 404, 405. Here we are. Yes, Hello. Sir, your name? LAPD. We'd like to see Dr. Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman is with the patient. Would you like to wait? No. No. <laughs> Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. Sorry, son. Sorry. Your investigation is much more important than my son. Dr. Stoneman? <laughs> Whatever, dude. Exactly <laughs> one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise doctor patient privilege, detective. Okay, good. What's your relationship with the victim? How well did you know Miss Randall? Barely at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Mm, you're looking a little bit shady there, my friend. Um... Is it your smoking jacket? No, we know it's not. Amphetamines. So this is what he's prescribed. So why would he prescribe that if he didn't know much about her? I think you're fibbing. Julia Randall has been your oh. patient for nearly a year. Come then, Cole. I'm sure you know that. Do you doubt my veracity, detective? Do you have access to my patient records? Oh, wait, hang on. Is there a date on this prescription by chance? July 46. Boom. Your prescriptions contradict you, doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I told her to slow up, but no. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine. It's not illegal, detective. A lot of young women in her line of work use it for weight loss. Well, that seems all fine. <laughs> Additional medications. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. Mm, his eyes are twitching. I'm gonna doubt it. Benzedrine is addictive, Meh. as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. Such a swanky I'm doctor, he's got dirty windows. Walking. That'll be all for now, Dr. Stoneman. We'll be in touch. Yeah, we'll be in touch, Dr. Stoneman. Yeah. Just gonna have a look around on here. Got some talcum powder That's here incredible. or something. Well, you don't know, Cole. You're not a doctor. So I wash or something. Um, fine. Fine. Rattle some cages, Roy. We're leaving. We go this way. Sorry you had to wait, sir. Do you want to make a complaint to the LAPD? It was you, wasn't it? I think so. Right. Thank you, Missy. We're off. Come, Roy. Back to the lift. Oh, no. Before we go, can we use your telephone? <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Stoneman. Operator, give me R and I. I thought he was just gonna jump out the window then. <laughs> Could he use her now? Cole Phelps, badge twelve forty seven. How can I help, Detective? How can I help, Detective? Messages for me, please. Oh, his voice went yes, a bit then, didn't it? The coroner's been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call if you like. Yes, please. Please, thank you. Al? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. 
Sure thing, Mal. We'll be right over. Hollywood Morgue. Let's go. To the left. Sorry, we're in America. To the elevator. Lovely. That sounds like it needs a little bit of maintenance. Boy, About what? I don't know. You looked relieved when you said she was dead. That's a strange oh. reaction to have to the death of a young patient. It is indeed. All right. Um. Go. Have you noticed how croakers only pull out the physician patient privilege card when they got something to hide? There are certain things people have a right to keep private until it gets in the way of police work. Hollywood receiving hospital, 3.17 p.m. This is all taking place very quickly, isn't it? All right, where's Mal? Yo! Toots. Detectives Phelps and Earl here to see the coroner. Yes, detective. He's waiting for you in the examination. My, aren't you looking lovely today? Uh, viewing gallery? Oh no. You. Cole, Roy, I have some information for you. What happened to that dude? You're the only person enjoying this, Mal. Get on with it. The bruising confirms two sets of hands, so we have two killers. Death was caused by heart failure due to an overdose of morphine. Have you dragged us down here to gloat? We already heard your theory. We agree that she was murdered. Yes, of course. I have something else to show you. All right, Mal, what gives? The dead guy's name is Jimmy LeBlanc, career burglar. He came in this morning. Someone stove his head in with a lump of two by four. So what? Good riddance. I found two serrets in his jacket pocket. Wow. Hang on a minute, Roy. We're listening, Mal. No sign of morphine use and no metabolized morphine in his blood. Scratch marks on his face. Which could be from getting his head remodeled. Time of death, Mal. Maybe an hour or two after the ram... And she's got broken nails. So you're saying Laughing Boy here could be one of our killers? That's a hell of a long shot. Thanks, Mal. We'll check it out. I found something else. Skin under her nails confirms it's his. Uh, some throat lozenges. Sorry, I don't play. I don't know if it's significant. His wallet was empty. The only other things he was carrying were the harmonica and the morphine. Okay. Carruthers. Yeah, he's here. I'll send him over. They have a guy called Henry Arnett in interview two for you next door. Oh, yes. Let me know Heather's how you get boyfriend. Out. Thanks or a fiancé, I beg your pardon. Sure, fiancé. Thanks for the lead. Oh, Roy. You're such a... Oh, Roy, look, your car's here. Should we go and smash it up? I want to make homicide. Right, where is it? Oh, it's... It's literally that building there. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up sometimes. Oh. Right. Oh, he's not in here. Where is he? Arnett is in interview two, Phelps. Oh, interview two. Thank you. Control room. Where's interview two? I should know this by now. Interview room two is over here. Staff only. Control room briefing. Uh, just, just, just for Roy, because he doesn't know where. Ah, oh, interviewing to. Here we go. Mr. Arnett, I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. Thanks for coming in. Call me Henry. You look like <laughs> so a gangster. Terrible news about Julia. Are you the one from Mafia Two who um, tries to do the drug deals with the Chinese, and it all goes wrong? Hmm. Possibly. I might be getting things confused. How well did you know Julia Randall? 
Vaguely. I'm in the clothing business, and Julia occasionally modeled for me. Are there models without jewelry in this city anymore? Was he telling the truth? He's, he's, his eyes are straight, but he's... Oh, I'm going to have to use an intuition point, I think. Ask the community. God, do I trust them. Doubt. Okay, doubt. He's asking whether you banged her in a chuck on the shoulder fraternity kind of way. I'm engaged to be married. It wouldn't be polite. Answer the question. This will remain private. Heather won't have to know. <laughs> yes. We had relations. Oh. Awkward. Miss Randall's landlady said she was seeing an older man. Could have been. I wasn't privy to all the details of Julia's private life. Um. Well, that's clearly it's. A lie. Maybe it's maybe that's his smoking jacket. Um. Henry, I don't like when people lie to me. She was seeing a man named Henderson. You know who I'm talking about. Easy on, detective. I may have heard of Henderson, but I don't know okay. his full name. I think he's from New York or someplace back east. No, he's not from there. He's from San Francisco, apparently. That's funny. Julia told her cleaning lady that he lived in San Francisco. Okay, you got me. I don't know where he's from. Julia wanted money. She always wanted money. She thought she could get something from this guy. She was wearing a distinctive engagement ring. You think she might have convinced him to buy it for her? Maybe he did, yeah. Maybe he and Julia were getting serious. I think that's you. Uh, 27. Okay, he's not, he's not an older gentleman, is he? Burglary suspect, LeBlanc. Ever heard of a Jimmy LeBlanc? No. Should I have? Is, is he an entertainer or something? Well, that's not true. Oh, well, I don't think we've got anything linking him with Jimmy or Matt LeBlanc. No, we don't have any evidence. So you wouldn't have any reason to believe that LeBlanc would be involved in Julie Randall's murder? If this guy is a criminal, he, he might have been involved. But, like I said, I've never heard of this LeBlanc character. Heather told us that you were in fashion. That's right. I say we trust your myth and find the goddamn Henry Arnett, director, Arnett Clothing sales? Emporium. Once I got out of the Corps, I used my... You were in the Marines? Sure. I'm proud of it. The Fighting Sixth. You were in the Sixth Marines? Yes. I was a captain. Which company? Uh, various companies. We had a lot of casualties. Which engagements? Okinawa. A couple of other places. <laughs> that will be all for now, Henry. You've been very helpful. I don't think he was in the Marines. That son of a bitch was never in the Marines. Why'd you <laughs> let him off the hook? Because we're giving him a couple of minutes before we start tailing him. Arnett is an amateur. We need to find out who killed the girl. Can you pass this on to Bukowski? Have him check the place out and go through his records. Sure, I'll pass it on. Thanks. Can you also have R and I run the records on a Jimmy LeBlanc and find out who was his last arresting officer? Have him get in touch via KGPL when they have some information. Well, that's a lot there. Oh, we're going to have to tail him, are we? Brilliant. These are always fun, aren't they? He's in that car at the lights. He was squirming like a worm in there. Don't you love it when they pull the war hero excuse? Actually, maybe you don't. Don't 
we get too close, we'll just sit in the junction. Highly illegal. But we're undercover. I'd have expected a cad like Arnett to be a better liar. This car's very twitchy, isn't it? The old keyboard control. Well, this looks like a... It's like playing Frogger. Ah! I don't think he had noticed that. How far are we going to drive? Ooh. Heat's off. We need to get back on top of them. Ah! Now what are you doing? Bad time to forget how to drive. What? I'm just, they're boxing me in. Where are you taking us, Henry? Oh, oh. It's funny how they all wait until you get near them and they launch out. Oh yeah, yeah, well done. He's going to see how slow he can go. Right, I'm going to sit in the middle lane. I.e. I'm going to sit across two lanes. And hold both lanes of traffic up. That idiot never stepped foot in Okinawa. Intense, intense music. Oh, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. How far are we going? If he's going driving all the way back to San Francisco, we could be here a long while. Ah, there we go, he stopped. Second-hand goods, bought and sold. He needs money and fast. He's gonna buy a ticket for an air for anywhere. Get in there and find out what he pawned. I'll stick with him. See how he intends to spend the money. Move in. Can't risk losing the trail. Okay. Puff it, Phelps. I'll bring the car around when I'm done here. Gonna hide behind the tree. Soft furnishings. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's not looking, is he? Oh. Have a look at some wirelesses. Where are you going? Oh, he's looking back. Are we timing this right? Whew. Okay. Too much slack. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, God, he's looking back. Get our shoes shined. Ooh. <laughs> A little bit too close. Cool it. Oh, we made it. I hate those tailing jobs. Oh, he's going somewhere nice. Mexico City. One way ticket, please. Next available seat. That would be one day from now. Is that okay? It's going to have to be. 
Mexico's nice. Maybe he's got friends there. LAPD, the man who just came in here, he bought a ticket? Yes, sir, to Mexico City, tomorrow night. If you hear from him again, don't mention this conversation. What have you got? He bought a ticket from Mexico City, tomorrow night. That's good, but this is better. God, it's Fabergé. Fabergé? You should have seen the look on the pawnbroker's face when I told him to hand it over. The guy who owned the joint thought it was worth at least 10 large for a cigarette case. Arnett only huh. got 600 clams. Dear, dearest Beverly, with all my affection, always Jay. Am I supposed to be trying to angle that so I can read it or... It's not really working, is it? Brilliant. I thought there was going to be something more from that, but no. Oh, I'm just going to use the telephone. It's over the road. Be quicker to run. Ah, watch out! Okay. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Crikey. Phelps, badge twelve forty seven. How could I help, Detective? Are there any messages for me? Yes, Detective. Detectives Bukowski and Galloway request you return to the Hollywood station. They have information in the Julia Randall case. Ooh. Any luck with the arrest record check on Jimmy LeBlanc? Yes, Detective. Jimmy LeBlanc's last arresting officer was patrolman Fred Wallace. He's posted the Hollywood 9th Beat Sunset Boulevard between Gordon and Wilcox. Thanks, ma'am. Okay. Uh, meet with Patrolman Wallace. Oh, so it's a tram. I wonder what the hell that noise was in. That made me jump. Right. So, we've got um, Hollywood Police Station. Let's go to Hollywood 9th Beat and then we're going to have a word with the, um, the beat officer. We'll take this car. Let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> a one-way ticket to Mexico. Old Henry's looking as guilty as a dog next to a pilot. Come on. <laughs> wow. Behind you, Wallace, Detective Phelps. Wallace, well, this is. Go left. I'm going right after this little prick in the alley. Okay. Oh, get out of the way, Flatfoot. I'm Cole Phelps, Marine Champion. Oh yeah, yeah, stop, stop blocking me! All right. Oh, I was gonna flank them, but I can't. Don't worry, this bit of this bit of plywood. Will, um, Where's that one? Oh, he's over there. Oh, there's there's another one. There's one over here. Tried to go for the disarming shot, but that didn't work. Oh, other shoulder, Cole. Other shoulder. Stay in cover. How do we switch shoulders? Where is he? I'm wide open here. It's all right. Hold. Find some cover. Quick draw McGraw here. Almost got him in the ass. Alright, we're moving in. Taking cover behind these bricks. Shot him in the ass. Shot him again in the ass. Stay in cover. 
Have you seen my hat? Come on, I winged him. Yes. We have to interview him now. Oh no, apparently he's dead. That was a wing. I winged him. Thanks. Outstanding warrant, armed robbery. Knocked over a drugstore back there, and it looks like he brought his whole posse with him. Bad luck for them. They're all yours now. We need some information. Ever heard of a burglar goes by the name of Jimmy LeBlanc? Sure. Yeah, sure. He nabbed Jimmy on a burglary beef a couple of years back. They cut through a music shop and into a jewelry store. He got four years. I miss his partner, though. His partner? Ooh, Big music's guy. playing. I had him cornered, and he picked up this huge display case and threw it out a plate glass window. Then he bolted out of there like something out of Barnum and Bailey. And he got away. I would have had him, except for LeBlanc yelling, run for it, Willie. Do you think he was an acrobat of some sort? More like a strong man, a wrestler, or a boxer, that kind of thing. Thanks. Uh. This is quite a meaty case, stuff. this one. Okay. Willie. In the car, Kowalski. No, it's Earl, sorry. You're suggesting LeBlanc is still working with Willie? Yes. A strong man held down Randall while someone administered the more. Right. Muscle opened up LeBlanc's skull. Could be. Let's go. Okay, the Hollywood Police Station. Back at 6.32 p.m. Where's Kowalski? He's given us the dope on LeBlanc. He worked burglaries with a big guy. Goes by the name of Willie. He might be our killer. Can you work boxing gyms, the Y, promoters, that kind of stuff? Since when have you started giving orders, Phelps? And where's the burglary angle? There was no sign of a... That's where our net comes in. Next stop, we speak to Lacey about a list of recent burglaries. The guy's a bum. His office is a front, and he's behind on the rent and his phone bill. And he's skipping ah. town tomorrow. Let's get him in and beat it out of him. Do you want to bring in the killer, Rusty? It could be too smart for your own good, Phelps. We've been talking about that, haven't we, boy? Stefan? Finbar? <laughs> Sir, I need the contraband list. Items stolen over the last year. Over the last year? God, that's going to be huge! Here you go. Thanks. Oh, I've got to pick things out now, have I? Oh my goodness, cigarette case, right. Um, wireless radio. Fabergé cigarette case. It's here. Arnett must be out of his mind trying to move ah, this while under a Ah, Beverly cloud. Evestrom, black sapphire ring. Julia Randall's ring, it's here. Um, anything else from um, Beverly? A silver pill box, perhaps? Seems Julia wasn't the first board society hey. girl to hide her bennies in that pillbox. Uh, Mount, Le uh, Mount Blanc, no. Gold candelabra. Um, pearl ring. Even the engagement ring was purloined. Our net is a cad. Boom, okay. So we need new person of interest is Mrs. Evestrom. Let's have a look. Evestrom residence. Right, it's gonna have a word. <laughs> God, this is a big case. This one. To the car. Other way, Roy. To the car. She was thirteen if she was a day. She's thirteen if she was a day. Once again, he's obviously trying to tell me something about a thirteen-year-old. But... Pistol packing, mama. It's like Fallout. Having discussions. Anything you would like to tell me, partner? Valves, don't be so touchy. Rusty had his best ever clearance rate work. Nice. Evestrom residence, 654. LAPD, ma'am. Is Mrs. Evestrom in? She is. Would you follow me, sir? Thank you. We'll just wait at the door awkwardly. I am Mrs. Eastrom. How may I help you? We appear to have recovered some stolen goods that belong to you, ma'am. Yes, of course. That terrible burglary. 
Would you like something to drink? No, thank you, ma'am. We have some questions, if you don't mind. Why would I mind, young man, if you are returning 43 pieces of my property? Okay, before we get down to that, I'll have a scotch. Thanks. <laughs> Maria, can you get the detective a drink, please? Right, Mrs. Evestrom. Can you describe to us what was stolen? It would be easier to describe what wasn't stolen, detective. <laughs> hmm. A priceless tiara that has been in the family for 50 years. A Fabergé cigarette case that was worth $25,000. Well, that's not true. Because we know it's about $10,000. Where is it? Has he got a price on it? Yeah, it's ten grand. You little fibber. You little insurance frauder. Why are you lying about the value of your jewellery, Mrs. Eastrom? Who do you think you are? Making heinous accusations in my own home. Because... We recovered the cigarette case from a pawnbroker. No one knows the real value of an item better than those guys. I inflated its value for the insurance. Yeah, company. there we go. There. Are you satisfied? Yeah, that's fine. Happy with that. Truth. <laughs> My daughter's boyfriend was quite taken with the case. Oh. I think he was even more disappointed than I was when it was stolen. Who's he? Who, 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 what? What can you tell us about the burglary? That terrible night. At least a year ago. But let's not go into that. Let's talk about what you've recovered. Uh. Well, this looks like truth. You were in the house when the burglary took place? Good heavens, no. I was at a social function held by a Dr. Harold Stoneman and oh. his wife. I returned home and... All of my things were missing. Stoneman is organizing these things. And, now, Mrs. Ah, he's but the ring reader, we'll is he? Touch let you know how you can recover your valuables. You have only mentioned a few of the items that have been stolen, Detective. What else has been recovered? You see, Phelps, that's why you get the drinks in early. Hello, Mother. <laughs> oh. Hello, Detectives. What is going on? We'd like to ask exactly the same question. You have met my daughter? Yes. at work. Oh, mother and father divorced. I took my father's name. The detectives recovered some of the things that were stolen, Don. Well, what did you find? A sapphire ring on the corpse of Julia Randall. What are you talking about? Your engagement ring, Miss Swanson. Would you be surprised to know that it was part of the proceeds of a burglary? That's an outrageous allegation. Yes, it is. I suggest we go straight to Henry Arnett's place and sort this mess out. <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, <laughs> It's, we're all going for a drive, are we? Plays the songs you want to hear, the most heard on the air, and the songs most played on... I don't actually know where his apartment is. Right here. Oh, no, sorry, hang on. Right, let's go. Ooh. We're driving Miss Daisy, so let's... Uh... We're missing something. Arnett is obviously arranging the burglaries. That's my fiance you're making scurrilous accusations about. Yes, it is. And Randall was obviously his partner. But obviously. neither of them are the type to creep apartments. You're being ridiculous. Both of you. There's there's a very good explanation for all of this. Yes. What a sock in it, sister. You're being played for a patsy and you're not even smart enough to see it. Right. I seem to remember on the old Xbox days there was an achievement for driving this lady without having an accident. So let's try and get this done. Okay, we're coming up to it now. Other way! Other way! We're here. No. They don't want us to park here. Damn. Sure, 
Hang on. Other way. Oh my god, will this traffic let me out? Apparently that's not where I need to park. Ah, there we go. Whew. Uh, oh, it did, there isn't an achievement. Oh, uh, these to be on the Xbox. 7.30. Oh, there we go. Show for service. Sister. There's the achievement. Let's find out who your fiancé really is. Yeah, I got an achievement. Hooray! Hello. Welcome, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, are you a resident? No. LAPD detectives. We're here to speak to Henry Arnett. Oh, uh, Mr. Arnett? Um, uh, apartment 30. You can take the lift. Thank you. Is he going to ring him and tell him to take the stairs? Well, isn't this just nice and awkward? <laughs> Surely she would know where his apartment is. We wouldn't need to be told. Going in, guns blazing. Oh, he's out. He's out cold. Oi! It's the milkman. Oh, I'll, I'll go, Roy. Don't you worry. Can I not wing him? How do, how do you do that slidey thing? Oh, more balance beams. Brilliant. Oh, we lost the hat. Go, Cole. Go, 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 go. Oh, for God's sake. Go. Oh, if we had a hat on, we'd have been okay. That was good of him to wait for us. Was that Willie then, do you reckon? Looks like he got you good, Phelps. Yeah, he really packs a wallop. How'd I get back here? Under your own steam, miraculously. He came in through the window, said hello, and then keeled over. How was our net? He's coming around too. He's all hopped up. Good time to get some answers. You missing something, Henry? Oh, has he got a suitcase? Ah, he's got his ticket. So anywhere. Mexico. You told Heather you're honeymooning without her? <laughs> Awkward. What's that? It's a watch. Bashar on Constantine. It's an extremely expensive watch, Henry. Was that on the stolen list as well? A graduation present from my parents. Oh. Okay. I'm at a loss. Right, professional we know burglary. All about the jewelry ring. You and Randall and the Blanc and Willie doing the legwork. I'm in the fashion business. No, you lie. Because we know your mother-in-law, well, your future mother-in-law, said you wanted the Fabergé egg. You're lying, Henry. How can you prove that I'm involved, detective? Um, actually, now we think about it, do we, does that, do we actually have evidence of that? The Fabergé cigarette case? Because Mrs. Mosserface said the bush, he liked that. Because you pawned yes. the Fabergé cigarette case today for six hundred dollars. Oh, and he pawned it, of course. That <laughs> That's the other obvious option. Julia's idea. Get a list of society parties. Find out where and when, and then have the guests. Julia was desperate for money. 
matter how much we made, she always wanted more. Oh, motive for the Randall murder. Why did Reed and LeBlanc kill Julia Randall? I, I wanted to stop to get out of that life. I was going to marry Heather if she had one. Julia told the others that, that they were out. That she was going to create a, a new gang. Well, that doesn't seem likely. Uh, I'm going to use an intuition on that because I'm not 100% sure. It's a lie. Okay. You're lying, Arnett. I think you ordered them to kill her. It was made to look like suicide, and when the coroner saw through that, you knew it was time to run. I told ah, okay. you I was involved in the burglaries. I had nothing to do with Julia's death. Why so, would I need to run? Because you're going to Mexico. Okay, that wasn't ov overly obvious evidence before he actually did his speech, was it? Have you told Miss Swanson that you're leaving for Mexico City tomorrow night? That it's a one-way ticket? Henry? Tell me it isn't true. I had no choice. I wanted to marry Heather. I told Julia I wanted out and she laughed in my face. I had to pay Willie and Jimmy a fortune to do her and now I'm completely broke. What you are, Buster, is under arrest. Hmm, okay, so who is Mr. Henderson? Who is Henderson and what is his involvement? Tell them what you know, Henry. I'll stand by you if you're going to tell the truth. It's the doctor, isn't it? There is no Henderson. That's a lie. Tell me about your first burglary. And don't lie. I can't remember. I don't keep a list of these things. Oh, I do. Hang on. Here we go. <laughs> your first burglary was a Dr. Harold Stoneman. You want to explain how he is involved, or shall I? Henderson is Stoneman. Boom! There we go. Crazy about Julia. She could get him to do whatever she wished. He threw the parties, and we arranged the burglaries. Julia never let him touch her. She just kept him hanging on the promise. Drove the good doctor almost insane. Henry Arnett, you are under arrest for burglary and for the murder of Julia Randall. Henderson is Stoneman, all right? I'm not the guy you want. Go talk to the good doctor. Oh, we will, knucklehead. Meanwhile, we're fitting you for convict stripes. Hey, there we go. There's one. So it's going to be quite a few arrests in this one. Right then. Back to the practice. <laughs> Back to the deli. Let's go. Here's what I did. That cop caught the guy who did the dahlia. But then they covered it all up. Oh, the turning circle. I guess the wedding's off. He only robbed her mother and killed her best friend. Cut the guy some slack. So how does the doctor fit in? That's what we're about to find out. Maybe we should ask him to give you a quick once over. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Sorry! Right, we're here. Come, come, right. Let's go, 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 go. Room 505, I seem to remember. For some reason, that was stuck in my head. Doctor to give us something to make this all better. All right, let's go. It's looking a bit dark. Oh. Hang on a moment, sister. Tell him it's Henry Arnett, and tell him it's urgent. I can't do that. Tell him, or I'll charge you with obstruction of justice. Doctor, I'm afraid Mr. Arnett is here to see you, and he says it's urgent. Send him in. I told you never to 
come. Tell us the truth, Doctor. Oh. I'm so glad you came. Prison will be better than insanity, and I'm already half insane with grief. Do you know that I loved her? I ruined my life for her, and yet I still love her. Will you testify in court that Arnett and Randall did these robberies? They organized the robberies. Julie would get the names of the guests attending my wife's parties. Didn't matter how much money I showered upon her, it was never enough. She never really cared for me. Doctor, I'm afraid you're under arrest. Yes, simp fool. <laughs> Other practice. You'll call Dr. Gerard. No, 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 no. Please don't cry. I want to see no one. Not my wife or my children, nor my friends. And I don't want a lawyer. Just lock me up and throw away the key. Okie dokie. Well, we can throw it out the window. How's that? What have I done? Oh! Didn't see that coming. Well, I did jokingly, but I didn't actually think it was good. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of paperwork, isn't it? Ah, oh, damn. Well then. <laughs> Clean up crew. Message for KGPL. Putting you through now. I need an ambulance in the corner. Immediately to the offices of Dr. Harold Stoneman, 1646 Iver Street, Hollywood. En route, Detective. You have a message. Detective Bukowski says the suspect is named Wilson Willie the Wolf Reed. <laughs> Willie the Wolf. Last known address is an apartment building at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Detective Bukowski says to meet them there. On our way. God. You be okay, you miss? Address for the runner. Oh, should be fine. Let's try and wrap this up then. Yeah, let's try and wrap this up. This is a big old case, this one, isn't it? There's the door, there's the door. Let's go! <laughs> that poor lady's getting no support. Victim support? Well, she's not really a victim, is she? But, um. <laughs> that old boy really fell for that broad. She was incredibly beautiful, boy. Would you throw it all away for a woman? Life has a way of making you make your pride. You're quite the romantic, Phelps. Stick with Indeed. the percentages. Broken hearts are for chumps. Oh, is that I can't? You're talking from experience. I certainly am. You keep the engine rolling. Oh, I like women as much as the next guy. As long as they're in their place. Cole, what are you doing? Just... Okay. <laughs> what was that? Okay, it doesn't matter. We're going to Willy the Wolf. What are you doing? We're going incognito. Those street lights will give us away. Oh, he's only lives here. There we go. 1 a.m. Lucky he lives just around the corner. He's around here somewhere. A big guy. Neighbors say he always wears basketball shoes and a cream jacket. And get this. The kids around here say he plays the harmonica. Find the game well and have the commander set up a dragnet. We want the area closed off. We'll take this out of the street. A harmonica playing wrestler. That's a weird one. Thinking I can hear a harmonica. Shush! Just keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. You don't want him to bolt on us. He used to be a wrestler? Oh, did he go? Oh, he went up there. Where the hell has he gone? 
Come on, Roy. Get your ass up there. Come on. Come on, he's getting away. Please, no more balance beams. I may have just made that slightly easier for him. I don't think we need to kill him. I think we need to capture him, so I don't wanna, I don't want to peg him. You got him, Roy? I'm getting slightly dizzy running around these circles. Ugh. Has he gone up again? I'll go. You stay there, Roy. Go on, bloody hell. If he's got another bit of 2x4 and he whacks me off this, I will not be happy. Somewhere, no place to go unless he grew wings. There he is. Wait, the son of a bitch. Oh, okay. We are literally shooting him. Wow, he's a tough. Oh, headshots! Look at that. Son of a bitch really picked this spot for it up here, didn't he? Julia Randall's folks are flying in from New York tomorrow to claim the body. Mm. I saw her on the slab. So perfect. Looked like she was made of porcelain. She really made an impression on me. Julia had that That's impact quite creepy. Christ, it's cold. You guys did good work here today. Roy! I think you should buy your brother officers a drink. <laughs> Do you now? That's very generous of you, Lieutenant. <laughs> Here we go, the naked city. Clues frown, 1616. Questions, 1616. This is going to be painful. There's a lot of damage. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, it's not going to be a five-star case then. There's a lot of damage. Oh, it's a five-star case. Yes, case close. Valorous. Fantastic. Well, there we are. The Naked City. Case close. Julia Randall lived fast and died young, sending one man to jail and three to the morgue. Wow, that's quite a <laughs> that's quite an epitaph. Um, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for your continued support. Sorry it took a little bit of time to get this work video out. Uh, due to illness and all that kind of jazz. But um, the Naked City, case closed. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.